Hi guys, so a quick pre-warning, this video is going to be a long one, so maybe go get yourself a drink and relax for a little while, because today I'm going to be going through all of the paintings that I created throughout this year's Inktober, with some of the processes behind a few of them to break up the footage a bit for you. Okay, so let's get started. First, I just wanted to give you an idea of some of the work I did behind the challenge, because I think it can be easy to imagine artists just sketch a perfect drawing immediately every day of the month, and I'm just here to prove that wrong. <laughs> so every day I did a rough pencil sketch before doing the painting. I'd scribble thumbnails as well, just to check how the light and dark was working, as all of my pieces were in black and white. Sometimes I'd scan these in and then work them up further too, and this would really probably take about half an hour or so to do, and that's on top of the paintings which took at least two hours each. Now as you can see they aren't brilliant, but I think in terms of the bigger picture this really sped up the process overall and it made it a lot easier to quickly see if that drawing was working or not, and what to fix before I literally put pen to paper. So anyway, let's get on to the actual finished paintings. I set myself a few rules, so to speak, before doing Inktober this year. I've already completed the challenge the last two years, and because this was my third time lucky, I thought it'd be good to try and challenge myself more this time round. If you do follow my art, you'll know that I'm a big fan of bright colours, but one thing I've wanted to improve a lot recently is how I use levels and tones. It's one thing to think in colours, but light and dark in an image is something that I really wanted to get better at, so I took this month as an opportunity to do so. You'll also know if you've been following me recently that I've been drawing a lot of animals, and I wasn't going to book the trend this month, <laughs> so I tried to stick with creatures this year in the hope that it would help me develop my animal characters more. The first few days I really wasn't sure which direction I wanted to take in Toba. I think like most people who take on this challenge at the beginning I was thinking of some big grandiose plan, like 31 days of a continuous story, maybe you follow a character, or I could leave little easter eggs and hint at something for the end of the month. I mean I have been personally lucky enough to follow a lot of great artists over the years who've done ideas like that and succeeded. Sakura being one that immediately comes to mind, and a few others too, I'll try and link some of them down in the description below. But to be honest, after the first few days I knew I just wanted to try and stay a bit spontaneous, especially as I didn't want to work on the paintings for 5 or 6 hours every day, I knew that'd just be impossible. So I knew from experience to actually finish the challenge, it's going to be best to approach each prompt as openly as possible, and then hopefully something good is going to spring from that my state. And I think it did generally! <laughs> but anyway, let's get into the nitty gritty of how it worked. The first week in general I was really just testing the waters and experimenting with inks as I hadn't really used them in a long time, probably since last year to tell you the truth. For the last few years I've admired people who paint with inks, similarly to how you may paint with watercolours, so I really wanted to explore the medium in that way, and hopefully find a few transferable skills along the way too. So in Freeze with the Penguins I barely used any washes, I tried to use ink straight from the jar, and I think that using ink that way really does a good job of keeping things very simple and graphic, and I tried to do that with the husky the day after too. But then when I compare that say with day freeze bait the day before, I was really pushing the ink washes in that one. I must have done hundreds of layers in that painting, and I think that did work to try and give that painting a little bit more texture and depth, and really realism too. And this early experimenting really pushed not only how I continued to use ink from that point on, but also what I then went on to draw, because I was gaining more confidence in the medium, and I thought, you know, maybe I can paint that. Especially with the snake in pattern. There were a few times where I harkened back to the previous year's Inktobers, and this was definitely one of those. If you remember the first day of Inktober last year, I painted a large snake for Poisoners, and I was kind of calling back to that in this piece. I think it can be really useful to approach similar topics again over time, and see where your art is changing and developing. I was really glad to see that these snakes had more character, and to me they felt a lot more alive than last year's snake did. In general, I love painting repetitive patterns, like the snake's scales, but I did try to control myself a bit more this year, and rely on the line work too. And I'm kind of glad I did, because I think that's a large part of why the eyes pop a lot more and look so much more prominent. So yeah, I just want to show a little bit more of the process behind Snake, and then I'm going to come back to chat about the next piece.
Okay, I'm back. The next few prompts after pattern were a bit more focused, like snow or dragon. It feels really clear what to paint with them, and I did like that as a change. One thing I would say is that I do think the official prompt list is maybe a bit too restrictive, or, you know, maybe repetitive, at least coming in from it about three years in now. Okay, so maybe I do gravitate towards painting snakes as well, you know, sue me, but I do think every year has, in my mind, a snake prompt, and that the words are mostly synonyms of each other. Like last year, I'm sure fat was one of the words, and this year we had husky. And I think fragile was a word two years ago at least, and this year we had frail. I haven't checked, so maybe I'm wrong on that, but I do think the words are a bit too similar for me, and I felt that a lot this year. So I did look at some of the other lists and incorporated those into my art this year too. I looked at Moonchild's Inktober, I looked at Chilltober, Ethel P's Inktober, Mossery, and X Hummingbird's Ghibli Inktober lists, all for inspiration this year too. To be honest, there were so many good Inktober lists this year that next year I think I might change it up and try to make my own, or maybe follow one of these other types instead if I find one I like the sound of. If you're a keen follower of the official prompt list, you'll have to let me know if I'm just becoming a contrarian by feeling this way, but to me, I, I just feel like they're getting a bit too samey. <laughs> I keep going off topic and it's just going to keep making this such a long video, so I'll try and get back to it. So during this second week, I played a lot with scale, which isn't something I do very often in my art. I've noticed I usually draw and paint as if I'm taking a photograph. It's always at my height and eye level looking at the object or scene. I don't really play very much with perspective or even positioning, so I did try to push myself and my compositions a lot in this week especially. With day 12's dragon prompt, I decided to pull back from the subject matter and almost lose it a little in the landscape. I tried to keep the tones lower contrast as well because I think sometimes I do go a bit crazy with my contrast. <laughs> it's funny because I'm quite a shy person in real life, but when I paint I like to go a bit mental. So yeah, the dragon was a fun change of pace and I think it offered a good bit of perspective and painting from this different perspective too. So I'm gonna stop again and just show a little bit more of the process behind it.
The days after Dragon really felt to me like I was beginning to find my footing. I was finding it easier to assess how much water I would need in a wash and then how the ink would dry, so I started pushing in the contrast again, especially in Ash and Overgrown. To be honest, those two feel like companion pieces to each other for me, especially when it comes down to the shapes. When I saw the prompt ornament, I felt really inspired because it didn't feel like a word I had seen before and it really made me think of my grandma. My grandma used to have loads of little ornaments in her house, all these animals and such made in ceramic and glass in her cupboards. And when she died, we inherited a few of those things, and one of those were these wooden lion dog statues that worked as bookends. I actually painted them years ago, back when I did GCSE art, and I remember them well enough now to just sketch them from memory for this prompt. But when I'd sketched it out, I thought it didn't really fit the rest of the month. I didn't really care if something stuck out a little bit, because I think that's pretty natural in 31 sketches over a whole month. But I did want them all to have a similar feeling between the pieces, so I did decide to add a little Chow Chow who wanted to stand as impressively as the statue that he'd now befriended. Plus it's just another excuse to draw a cute Chow Chow puppy, let's be honest, that was the real and only reason. And going off topic just again for a sec, but if you've listened this far, I imagine you're going to be glad of it. Obviously, like everyone, I love the what I'm going to call basic dogs, like Labradors and Spaniels. <laughs> There's not a slight on those dogs because they are some of my favourites, but if I was rich and I had a massive house and I could fill it with loads of animals, I would want some of the more exotic dogs, like as I'm now going to call them, <laughs> like a Chow Chow or a Rottweiler or a Newfoundland. These are my favourite rare dogs. And I was just wondering, what are yours? What kind of dogs would you really like that you never really see in real life? Okay, dog talk's over. Because I was feeling more confident with ink, I decided to try and experiment a little bit more in this piece. I've seen artists in the past add mediums to their watercolours when they were wet, and I've always been tempted to give that a go and see like what kind of textures they would create. So I did try to do that more in this piece. I sprinkled some table salt over the ink when it was drying to see if that would give the stone of the lion dog a bit more of an interesting texture and to kind of like make it conflict more with the dog, just so you could see that they were more different. And I think the results were pretty interesting. In certain places, the salt seemed to soak up the ink far more and it would make spikes in the ink, but then when the ink was a bit drier, the effect was a lot lesser and it kind of just gave it an overall grain, kind of like an old film. I think in those places you could easily just mistake it as being the paper's texture coming through more clearly. I really enjoyed doing this though, and I did incorporate it in a few of the other paintings after this point, but I'm not going to tell you which of those were, just to see if you can tell. And I feel like this is definitely a technique I want to use now in watercolours going forward. I might try and see how other ingredients affect the paint as well. You're going to be able to eat my art by the end of this. So yeah, if you do have suggestions, or you've seen people add other things to their watercolours in the past, make sure to mention them to me down in the comments so I can go give them a go too. Okay, I'm going to nip off just once again so that you can see how this one panned out.
feel like this week, from Legend on day 15 to Treasure on day 21, were my strongest days. I was really happy with how they turned out, and I think looking back on the month, this was my highlight. I think the style varies a lot at times. Sling Spider feels a bit too real for me at times, but then the bear in Shred feels very characterised, which I do like a lot. But in the end, I think that that's some of the reason that I enjoyed this part of the month so much. I felt like these experiments just worked out a lot in these pieces. For the prompt treasure, I really wanted to paint a Nifla, and I thought I'd built up the excuse of magical animals when it came to the dragon or the unicorn, so I thought, why not? If you've seen Fantastic Beasts, you'll know where this scene is from immediately. Oh well, hopefully you do. <laughs> I ended up redrawing a lot of the jewellery when I realised there was no sensible way of getting a dark wash to not look super patchy behind the Nifla, or at least I couldn't achieve that. <laughs> The white ink I used did a pretty good job in general. I did prefer it to the white ink from Winsor Newton's as it didn't wash out as this slightly blue colour. I'm calling you out Winsor Newton, your white ink is really questionable and I would not recommend it to people. So dramatic. But yeah, a cheap white gel pen worked pretty well in its stead and when it came to drawing the jewellery chains, it just popped a lot better than the white ink. I also used it to touch up a bit of my line art a few times over the course of the month too. If you've got some suggestions on better white inks that I could try, or maybe what you think I did wrong with mine <laughs> and why it looked so odd, I'd really appreciate hearing it because I ended up just pushing myself to try and be perfect every time I let the black ink touch the paper. And it got to be a real nightmare on some of the ideas. Misfit, I'm thinking, is probably the best example of that. So yeah, I feel like Nibbler is probably one of the best examples of this month of if this doesn't work, just keep trying again. You see, I drew everything in black to then go and redraw it all again in white, <laughs> but I guess that's just how it goes sometimes, and overall this ended up probably being one of my favourite pieces of the month. I'm going to stop again here and pick back up with you as we take on the final stretch of paintings.
Okay, I'm back and we're heading on to the final stretch. This month's prompt squad is your favourite piece from Inktober, but if I was on a downer I would say that this is my least favourite of the month. Which is a real shame because I found these photos of a barrel eye fish and it has this see-through head because it lives so deep underwater and I was so excited about painting one, but then I just could not get that translucent underwater effect that I really wanted. Yeah, I blame the white ink for that. <laughs> so yeah, I guess it's just something to keep working on. I love the appearance of underwater art, so maybe I'll just focus on that more in a coming piece and then try and learn what went wrong with this one. By the fourth week, I really wanted to almost finish off similarly to how I began the month. I had this final push on being a little bit more experimental and creative at times, but I wasn't too worried about them being the prettiest. I kind of just wanted to get better at inks and in my compositions. So yeah, I kind of re-centred myself by the end of the month. Coat on day 27 kind of epitomised what I hoped to get from the month. I liked the reflective symmetry of the composition, but the change in levels didn't make it look too religious either, as my old architecture teacher would have said. I feel like the lights and darks were weighted very well. It reads easily to me, and I just like the simple mink characters too. Though it wasn't the most difficult to paint in the month, or I imagine ever, <laughs> but I did like how this one turned out a lot. So I'm just going to show a bit more of this one now.
On day 28, I was inspired by my hometown of Blackpool. If you've never had the joy of visiting, it's a seaside town in the north of England. And one of the many things that you can do is tourists can go ride the fancy donkeys up and down the Golden Mile. Now, I've heard some horror stories over the years about those donkeys and how they're treated. And to be honest, I really like donkeys. I like them more than horses. <laughs> I like the goofiness. I love the ears. I just, I just really like them. <laughs> I think I must see a bit of myself in them. So I wanted to give them this nice holiday in that setting instead. Again, I know it's I'm getting really symmetrical in these days. I think my compositions simplified a lot in the last week. They're all very central and very easy to read. To be completely honest, I think some of the reason was I was getting a bit tired, but I also still wanted there to be some impacts in the paintings. So maybe I rested a little bit on my laurels with that. And I'm gonna say the same for you guys as I leave you just one more time to relax and see the process behind the final painting I created for Inktober. So yeah, that was my take on Inktober 2019. 
We're starting November, going into winter, and I'm already feeling a lot more confident in my compositions and how I visualise light in my paintings. It's been good to get so much practice in such a short amount of time. It really hits home certain lessons, especially with so much experimentation. I definitely recommend taking on this challenge next year, and you've got a lot of time to prepare yourself if I say this now, because it really does help you learn a lot of new skills, especially traditional ones if that's your interest. It's also been a great way to find new artists and make some new friends too. Here on this channel we do Prompt Squad and that's a really good way of getting to know and keep up with artists. And the prompt for this month is what is your favourite piece of art you created during Inktober? And if you have a piece you'd like me to feature in it, just comment down below what was your favourite piece that you created during your Inktober and I'll make sure to feature you in the next Prompt Squad video that's probably going to come out in about a week's time. It'd be really great if you could join because it's such a good little community, we've got so many great artists and yeah, it's just a really nice friendly way of keeping up with other people. And I think a lot of the joy, especially from things like Inktober, is meeting other people and seeing how they take on the same things as you. And that's it for another year of Inktober. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to pick up any of the illustrations I created this month, please come visit me over on my shop on Etsy, where I have originals and prints from this month and a load of other pieces of art. Links are all going to be down in the description as always. I hope you're all doing well and you aren't too tired from this year's challenge and that you'll come and have a chat with me down below in the comments. I hope to see you soon.